Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Jennifer Yonkis. I'm a general surgery resident at Mayo Clinic, Rochester, Minnesota. I am excited and honored to be presenting um, our research today investigating the participation of women at, surges, uh, at SAGES over the last 17 years. I have no financial disclosures. I hope that's a satisfactory disclosure slide. None of the other authors do either. Um, so before discussing our research question, it's important to understand a little bit about the history of SAGES, how it inspired our thought process, and why we looked at SAGES in particular. The mission of SAGES is to improve quality patient care through education, research, and innovation and leadership in GI and endoscopic surgery. The Society has a specific task force dedicated to increasing diversity with the mission of fostering innovation through diversity and inclusivity. SAGES is a relatively young organization founded in 1981, and despite being young, it has quickly grown to being the second largest surgical society, secondary only to the American College of Surgeons. It has, began, uh, has been a role model for progressive action in the surgical field, supporting the cutting edge of surgery. It has also been uh, progressive in incorporating diversity and recognizing the importance of diversity. The first woman president was appointed in 2010, and the previously mentioned We Are Sages Committee was formed in 2017. I'm here today presenting at the diversity session, which was just started last year in 2018, and the 2019 president-elect is Dr. Aurora Pryor. This idea of looking at women participation at surgical societies has been done before. At this platform last year, a study compared 14 surgical societies in the years of 2011 and 2016. It looked at the number of women plenary speakers and found that there was no significant change between the two years. Four of the 14 societies had no female plenary speakers at all, but there were exceptions to this, SAGES included. So with this background, our question was, SAGES is a large surgical society with a task force specifically dedicated to diversity, but has the participation of women at the surgical, annual surgical meeting increased over the years? So to investigate this, we selected five meetings between the years of 2002 and 2018 to be representative. We assessed the gender of chairs, moderators, and presenters by looking at the published programs. We then broke our participants down into either educational panel participants or abstract session participants. The reason for this division was because SAGE's presenters are selected via two different paths. Educational panel presenters are um, appointed by committees and abstract sessions are selected on their research abstract quality alone. We then perform statistical analysis to look at the different rates of women participation, as well as look at other factors associated with increased women participation. We looked at 404 sessions, 5,221 presenters, and 835 moderators. The graph on the lower left shows the composition of abstract sessions compared to educational panels. Throughout all five of the years, there was 55% educational panels and 45% abstract sessions evaluated. We then calculated the percent of women presenters per year as well as the percent of women co-chairs and moderators for each year. We found an increase in the women uh, educational panels from uh, for speakers from 5% to 21% for educational panels and an increase of 21% to 30% in the abstract sessions. When we looked at moderators, we also found an increase from 4% to 31% for educational panels and 5% to 26% for abstract sessions. It was interesting to see that between the years of 2017 and 2018, we saw one of the biggest jumps at the educational panel moderator level. There is an increase from 18% to 31%. This is coinciding with the founding of the We Are Sages Task Force. We then looked for other factors that increase women participation. And we found that women had higher odds of presenting in sessions co-moderated by women, and women also had a higher odds of presenting at abstract sessions. And this remained true on univariate and multivariate analysis. We then looked at the moderator composition of sessions, as well as looking for mantles and womanals. You might be asking yourself, what is a mantle? What is a womanal? For our study purposes, a mantle is an educational panel that is consistent of all male speakers and presenters. A womanal is an educational panel with all women speakers and all women presenters. We found that the percent of sessions with at least one woman moderator increased from 9% in 2002 to 55% in 2018. 
The graph in the upper right shows the contrast, uh, in contrast shows the number of sessions with at least one male moderator. This was extremely high in all the years that we evaluated. Two of the years had 100% of sessions with at least one male moderator, and in 2018, 94% of um, sessions had at least one male moderator. The number of mantles decreased from 75% in 2002 down to 16% in 2018. Womanals remained very elusive during every year that we studied, and we were unable to identify any womanals. We then wanted to know, is the rate of change at stages increasing fast, faster than the National General Surgery faculty average? We found that both women moderators and presenters at stages were increasing at a growth rate of about greater than 1% per year. This is increasing faster than the general surgery faculty women assistant professors, which is increasing at a rate of 0.5% per year, and women full professors, which is increasing at a rate of only 0.3% per year. The participation of women in medicine has increased drastically in recent history. 53% of medical school graduates are female, and 40% of general surgery residents are female. General surgery faculty in the country is 22%, and SAGE's membership pretty closely mirrors the general surgery faculty in 2017. This means that we have room to grow. But why is diversity important, and why is it important for women to participate in society meetings? So diversity is important because we know it's linked to success, innovation, and profitability. By diversifying the participants at the societies, we can diversify membership and possibly increase membership. We can also create a diverse pool of healthcare providers. And it's important to note when we're looking at this that diversity of idea and thought is created by a nuance of life experiences. We use proxies to measure diversity, such as race, age, gender, sexual orientation, but there's a lot of factors that go into creating this diversity of ideas, and we should really be exploring what all of those are. So in conclusion, there's been a significant increase in women presenters and moderators at stages in the last two decades. Women moderators are correlated to increased number of women presenters, this increase is outpacing the growth of women general surgery faculty across the nation, and future directions should include looking into other underrepresented minorities and possible predictors of diversity. Thank you for your time. I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>